Welcome to the Kim B. Davis Show. Here we'll talk to the leaders in technology, culture, business, and the arts. We'll cover politics, advocacy, motherhood, writing, mental health, and mostly we'll focus on hope. Join Kim B. Davis, author, playwright, radio personality, event consultant, professional speaker on the Kim B. Davis Show. Good evening and welcome to the Kim B. Davis Show. I'm your host, Kim B. Davis. And this evening, we have one of our favorite guests on this evening. We have Dr. Angela Celeste May. We know her as a clinical, organizational, and forensically trained psychologist. She is also president of the Michigan Psychological Association Foundation Board. She is also an author and a musician, and we love to sit down and talk with her because she breaks everything down. Good evening, Dr. Angie. How are you? Good evening, Kim. I am very well, very well. Thriving in abundance. Thank you for asking. I, amen. And that is part of our topic tonight. That is a great segue. We're going to be talking about abundant joy and living post COVID. Okay. So a year ago, we were like, oh, this is COVID. What is this? We got to wear a mask. We yeah. were scared to go outside. We were scared to go to the grocery store. We weren't going to a restaurant or going to a stadium or concert or any of those things. We were just like, what's wrong with these people that keep going out and hanging out? Don't they know it's germs outside? Like, what's wrong? <laughs> now, a year later, we can see light at the end of the tunnel. Yes. A lot of people are getting vaccinated, which is a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. cases are coming down however COVID is still here and we Absolutely. have hot spots around the world where COVID is actually still raging and even in the United States there was a, a outbreak in California and mm -hmm. they're saying that even when you're vaccinated it only means that you may not necessarily die from COVID but you may catch it and it just may be like what the flu does you just may get sick but you may not feel the full effects of what COVID would have been like had you not been vaccinated. And so coming out, being able to go back to the gym, going to a restaurant, going to the movies, people are talking about going to the movies. And I'm like, mm, I don't know if I'm quite ready yet to go to a movie, but I am excited to go to a movie and get a big tub of popcorn and get a big, you know, icy cold beverage so I can sit down and enjoy this new slate of movies that's coming out. But let's talk about why it's important to be joyful and to be optimistic and how that helps us in life. Oh my goodness. Well, um, the, the oh my goodness is uh, because there's so many reasons, there's so many reasons um, that being joyful in life is, you know, I almost wanna say necessary. It's yeah. uh, good research has shown it's mm -hmm. it uh, it affects us physically being joyful uh, you know psychologically the idea of jo of feeling joy is you know you're, it, that's an emotion it's a sci your psychology in terms of the way you think um, but you know if you just take every one of those categories uh, people can tell you stories from their own experience and then the scientific research has shown as well that. Uh, maintaining an attitude of joyfulness, the glass is half full, like, like you said in your word, and you know, we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, all, all of those like positive ways of looking forward and um, just living in that space, that mental space, it has been known to uh, help us heal faster on the physical side of things, physical front. It helps us, uh, it actually um, strengthens our immune system, you know, maintaining an attitude of joy and hopefulness. It strengthens our immune system. When we do become ill, it helps us to heal faster. Um, uh, even, even for some serious illnesses, like uh, people who had cancer, cancer patients, um, uh, you, you know, you name it, the gamut, uh, maintaining an attitude of joyfulness, it really, on the physical level, literally boosts your, uh, your immune system and your bo body's ability to fight infection, all of that. So there's, there's just so much on the physical front, on the mental front, um, 
if we think of the opposite, you know, when you're, you know, anxious and stressed, et cetera, we know just from our own experiences that it's harder to concentrate. Mm -hmm. So if it's harder to concentrate, harder, uh, makes it more difficult to get things done and all of those other things that we experience when we're um, being negative or um, down or uh, stressed in a negative way, then just like flip it around to the opposite and think of all of the, the, the ways that maintaining a joyful attitude impacts those same areas, those same mental uh, workings, <laughs> you know, your concentration, your ability to remember things your, and recall uh, things, your ability to, um, you know, memory storage, of course, that's memory also, um, the rate at which you're able to, uh, and the efficiency at which you're able to get things done, like just all of that, all of that and so much more. Mm -hmm. um, being joyful, maintaining an attitude, a positive attitude impacts, it impacts our, um, our relationships. Um, you know, once again, you're less likely to snap at people, uh, you know, even if you feel like it, maybe or you feel less like it. If you're maintaining an attitude of joy, um, trying to find the positive in the situation, um, trying to learn from, you know, challenges, just, you know, it, it, the list goes on and on and on. So I definitely would say, I'm not the only one who would say that uh, being joyful is necessary uh, or, at, le or at, the, at least if you uh, are having some struggles with that, at least um, uh, working on developing a practice of, you know, trying to approach life with joy. Um, it just makes, uh, it's necessary for, I would say, the best quality of life. I would put it that way. Excellent. Excellent. So I want to piggyback on something that you said. I want to go back to it. You talked about healing quickly when yes. you are full of joy, when you're mm -hmm. optimistic. And you know, this is Mental Health Awareness Month. It's still yes. May. And so true. for those that are struggling with anxiety and depression, what are some ways that they can increase their joy? Because you know, depression wants to rob you of your joy. That's one of the primary things that it does. But what are some Absolutely. things that can help turn people around? What are, are, are some tips or some tools that they could put in their arsenal to help fight off those different conditions? Uh, well, I would say, um, uh, well, first, just to back up, I'm so glad that you reminded us all, reminded everyone that this is still Mental Health Awareness Month. It certainly is. Um, and usually, or more often than not, uh, just as you were saying, when we um, talk about mental health awareness and when you see programming around mental health awareness, it is, you know, speaking to those very things, the challenges, the mental and emotional challenges in life and um, alerting people that these things occur, um, to, to be aware of them and teaching people how to recognize certain signs and symptoms when they see them and all of that. All of that's so important and all a part of Mental Health Awareness Month. Uh, but, or, and, as a comma, and also um, uh, the very thing that you're talking about today that we're discussing today, Mental Health Awareness Month is also about helping people to learn what positive mental health looks like. Mm -hmm. Learn what, um, you know, just like you said, uh, what tips and tools help to develop and maintain a positive mental health because, you know, mental health runs the gamut, you know, it's a range just like any other kind of health. Mm -hmm. So um, to answer your question, I would say one tool, one tip to keep in mind is to build on your own experiences. Um, one thing about, you know, our brain is a powerful thing. Our emotions are very powerful uh, and they can be uh, used for the good and for the bad. They can be used for health and they can be used for disease or for pain. Um, and I say that to say that I, I often, you know, I often speak about habits of thinking, habits of speech and, and how that feeds either our joy or our depression and stress and anxiety. So one tip or, or tool, I would say, is to really practice focusing in on your own positive experiences, even if you can only think of one. Like, let's say that you, you know, you've had, you have had, uh, you know, such difficulty and such um, challenges in your life that it really, you know, and this happens for people, 
uh, whether they've had a lot of challenges or, or perhaps not a lot, but maybe um, like, you're, like you've spoken of so often, even if perhaps the, the challenges have been more so in recent times. Mm -hmm. So in the past year, right? All of these challenges, um, whether, you know, regardless of the number of challenges or how impactful they have felt, um, sometimes it's easy to go down that slippery slope just like you were saying, you know, that, that robbing us, that slippery slope of beginning to see the world and our experience in the world as um, something that is just always negative. Mm -hmm. You know, I just can't, I thought and thought, I can't think of a single good thing. <laughs> you know, we get it sometimes, you can get into that kind mm -hmm. of that mentality. And, and then, and therefore, because it feeds on itself and snowballs, you really begin to convince yourself of this narrative that, you know, they're just, I just can't think of anything. Mm -hmm. So one tip I would say is to um, choose something, one thing, really work on thinking about one or more, one, two, or 10, you know, that whole count your blessings one by one is so powerful. Um, if it's, you know, something, one memory that you have, or one, uh, you know, the, the person in your life or something somewhere, start with that and really spend time on that. And when I say spend time, I mean, spend time being thankful for it, spend time thinking about and looking at how did it impact you in a positive way, even if it was for just a couple of hours, mm -hmm. even if it was just for that day, um, because there, there are always lessons to be learned. And uh, with things like anxiety and depression that can build on, you know, build on itself. Um, sometimes the lessons that we take away are, you know, like I was saying there, you know, it's always going to be this way. It'll never get, it's always, you know, the always, those finite terms, always, never, you know, I can never get that kind of thing. Um, so one tip is to focus on those positive things in your life. Think about them, remember them, appreciate them, um, uh, remind yourself of how, that, how it felt. And the reason that that's important is because it really just like, just puts a stop to, um, I'm thinking about, can you imagine records are old fashioned? <laughs> I'm thinking about old fashioned records <laughs> from way back in prehistoric times. Right. <laughs> way back. And the needle going, you know, across the record. And you had and a little thing in the middle. Yes. Yeah, I know all about that. <laughs> you out there who don't recall what we mean, you know, you can look it up online. What is yeah. a record? You know, in a record player, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think about a record player and the needle that would go across the record player to help the record play. Mm -hmm. And that idea of when you grab that needle and you go straight, like squeak it across the record to make it stop. Mm -hmm. sometimes we have to throw something in our brains to kind of like interrupt and make it like stop that negativity somewhere so holding on to and really saying well wait a minute I'm saying it you know it never works out and it's always this uh, let me see was there one time when maybe it wasn't mm -hmm. so that and build from that and that interrupts the uh that conviction that it you know it's always bad Mm -hmm. So that, that's one, one tip or two to start with. Um, another is, uh, you know, we, all, we talk so much these days, which is important. It really is important. We talk so much about self-care, mm -hmm. very, very important, very necessary. Absolutely it is. Um, but it's like everything else. There's um, moderation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can overdo certain things. So I wouldn't say you could overdo self-care, you know, I, I wouldn't put it that way, but what I can say, I would say is sometimes, you know, we still need balance. So <clears throat> there are times when um, we're, we can focus so much on ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, in our, in our growth, mm -hmm. what do they call navel gazing? And you know, what do I need? That's important. You've got to ask those questions. Absolutely. Um, but if you do it so much so that it is to the expense of putting some time and focus and energy on that mother across the street who's having who's struggling with her kids, or you know so, that coworker who may uh, benefit from you know your support. If it's all about ourselves, then it becomes a toxic, not a healthy place to be, yeah. um, because we live in communities for a reason. We're here to share with one another, 
and that strengthens us. So the second, like like second and third tip, I would say is number one, work on balancing. I'll say to develop balance between uh, maintaining the idea of how important it is for you to take care of yourself, while at the same time recognizing how important it is for you to give. Mm-hmm. There is nothing like giving to someone else, thinking about someone else's needs to help us, you know, pull us out of our own uh, downward spiral, mental spiral. Mm-hmm. Um, it, and, and it's a great reminder because it feels so good, you know, to help someone else to, to know that maybe we had an impact, even if it was a little impact, mm-hmm. uh, to, to know that maybe you, you know, yes, yesterday I was on a walk. And this little blonde kitty decided that, you know, to make friends, it was a cute little thing and had a collar. I was like, oh, I don't, I didn't know, you know, whose home it belonged to. So I called my husband, bring, we had some cat food left from our, you know, our kitty who is in past. Away. So I bring some cat food, I bring this whole giant, <laughs> <laughs> a little bitty kitty in it, bam, like it brought a whole dish. <laughs> so um, it just felt so good to give a little kitty cat a little food, you know, a little straight, whatever, whatever the thing is or things, if you can do one thing a day or get on you know, social media and maybe rec- make a recommendation to someone about something positive that may help them or a funny cartoon or, you know, any, any, anything you can do, again, making that a part of your life also, that can definitely help pull us out of um you know, the, the downward thinking. Um, so that was, that was two, I said, I said two and three, two is to get in that habit of doing for others as well as for ourselves. And then three goes with two. And that is the, uh, reminding ourselves of how good, just remind yourself how good that feels, Mm -hmm. do it. And then take some time to really appreciate and, um, uh, how good it feels. And here's the thing, gratefulness. Thankfulness and grave. You know, I'm so thankful I was there. You know, I was able to help her, or I was able to, you know, give him that, or whatever. So those are three things right there. I would say, I would say three things. Yeah. And those are some great suggestions. Um, I would add that no man is an island, and I think That's that right. oftentimes when we're anxious or we're depressed, we pull away from people. And oftentimes when people are going through something really hard and they help people and we've read, you know, feel good stories where people will say that made me feel so much better. And it took me away from worrying about my problems. And that's exactly what you're talking about. Exactly. I want to read something to you and you're going to laugh when I read because it goes right into what you were talking about. So, you know, we always talk about the Bible. So yes, I have a scripture from Proverbs seventeen twenty two. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit saps a person's strength. So even if you are a student of the Bible, studying the Bible, reading the Bible, or just interested, even the Bible talks about being optimistic, having Absolutely. joy. Absolutely. Oh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I want to read this real quick and then I'll let you respond. Mindfulness, controlling our thoughts is important. We have to make sure because you were talking about how one thought can snowball into another thought. I've been doing a lot of reading on people in how we ruminate on particular things. Like you become obsessed with either bad things happening or always negative, or you're reading into something negative that you think that somebody said, and they're like, but I didn't say anything, but you didn't say hi to me. I didn't hear you. I didn't see you. And you're like, well, they must be angry at me, but I didn't see you. You made an assumption. Mm -hmm. In in Philippians 4, 8, it says, fix your thoughts on what is true honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable how do we keep that muscle toned and in good use go ahead dr angie because i know you got that. <laughs> well that that's it that's it like any other muscle uh like any other muscle you you know it's going to atrophy mm-hmm. or it's going to weaken if you don't use it it's going to get stronger if you use it it's going to become more flexible if you stretch it every day so a- absolutely. Um, you were saying even the Bible, uh, even the Bible, I would, I would say it's all through the Bible. Mm-hmm. Be joyful, be at peace, 
do not worry. Uh, God is constantly saying to his people, you know, um, that, you know, it's in the old songs too, my yoke is easy, meaning hand me the burden. God takes our burdens. It's all through the Old and New Testament. So uh, that's that's a, a, a one of the major themes of the scripture is that um, we, we serve a God who, if we would allow the Lord to do so in terms of stepping aside because we are given choice, we have a choice. Uh, he's not necessarily going to ch chase us down, although he did chase Jonah down, which cracks me. <laughs> yeah, he, he chased us. He did. He did. Jonah was on the way. I, I'm getting out. I'm not going there. Like I, I'm, I'm packing not, my bag. Where's the ship? Yeah, I'm with, right, right. Uh -uh. Nope. You, you not. No, no. me. No. And, and I, he could have chosen to just sit in that <laughs> whale too. He had a choice. <laughs> what, what you gonna do? I, and he probably was like, you know what? Enough of this is enough. Let me know. Right, right. God told me because you know this is not oh. comfortable. So yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but yeah, yeah. One of the major themes. Uh, uh, of the scripture, you're absolutely right. It's all through there. Is um, uh, I, you know, I did not create you for misery. You'll go through some things, but I'm there. I'm there to lighten your burden. All of that. So, mm -hmm. absolutely, absolutely, so true. And I love that you said, you know, how do you strengthen that muscle? Um, and and you're speaking of ruminating because uh, so many times we do talk about the snowball effect again with you know mental health month or awareness month but all year long um we do talk about how negative thoughts can snowball and build on themselves mm -hmm. and my experience has been that that is also true for positive thoughts yes is that after a while if it, it doesn't feel right it doesn't feel natural to to nestle you know you just kind of work at it you know um our personalities, you know, we all have different personalities. Some people are naturally kind of more buoyant, others uh, maybe less so. Um, so it's like any other any other exercise. It's, it may take a little work and, and because of personality sometimes, because of experiences, definitely things that we've been through, uh, all of that has an impact. Um, I think sometimes, sometimes one of the things that gets in the way of, of that joy is that it can feel very inauthentic to people initially. Mm -hmm. uh, my um, my sister and I, uh, with with our company AMA and Associates Incorporated, mm -hmm. uh, what we're doing right now is we are um, we are midway through three quarters of the way through a six week power group for women, and it's a coaching group for women leaders. Mm -hmm. And what we're talking about really is, uh, you, you know, using our voices and a full voices, of course, is as a way of saying, you know, speaking up, standing in your power. Now, these are strong, powerful women leaders. But, you know, even still, we all have those areas where, you know, we're, we're really strong here, but in other areas of our lives, like, oh, you know, so we're working, working on that. And uh, each week I've been giving, uh, Michelle and I have been giving them um, like a little homework kind of things to tune into, things to notice, and um, like mind work a little bit. And I said mind and emotion. And, and some of the homework is just note things. Like, don't change it. Just notice. Like, you know, and, and start. So it's really illuminating for the ladies because it's really uh, opening stuff up like, oh, wow, you know, when I really think about what, what my thought patterns are in this particular area. So I mentioned that because um, when we were talking about this building on, you know, the positive thoughts building on, on each other. Um, and that idea that if you're not used to that, or if you're in a, a thought habit of expecting doom, you know, downness either on yourself or expecting the situation to blow up, you know, and once again, you know, always expect that when you do start to work on turning that around, it can, you know, like I said, it can start, it can feel kind of inauthentic. And that's one of the things I was saying to, to the ladies is that as you, you know, kind of do this little homework and sort of note things week to week, be, do be aware that initially it'll feel like you're, it may, it might feel like you're lying to yourself. Like, <laughs> even though I know it's not true, well, I guess maybe this will, <laughs> I guess this will turn out okay. Even though, so keep the even though, you're not supposed to say even though, but it can, it can kind of feel that way. Mm -hmm. But it's like anything else. It's like when you first start to stretch or first lift that weight, it, it's, it's just like, just, 
am I doing this right? It feels awkward until, you know, and until you kind of get in the rhythm of, of whatever it is and you learn what you need to do and how your body responds. Same thing with this muscle, mm -hmm. that thinking muscle, that, uh, uh, you know, the, psych the, the psychology, same, same idea. It, it takes work, but it's work that's worth it. Just mm -hmm. as physical exercise, literally, you know, it saves our lives, like literally saves our lives, strengthens our cardiovascular muscles, um, you know, all of the rest. Um, the, the mental habit of joy, practicing building, you know, the day-to-day -day work of building those positive thoughts until you get to the point where it, does, it begins to feel kind of natural or you remember quicker. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait, let me not, let me not say that negative. Let, wait, let me... Okay, I, I, I take it back. What I would I should say? Let me say it this way. And it feels good. Mm -hmm. You know, it re, it feels good. So um, I I think it's important to just remind ourselves that uh, just like a wonderful relationships, just like physical health, you know, all of those things. This this working on our mental and emotional joyfulness. Mm -hmm. uh, it it's a process. It can feel uncomfortable sometimes, but it's always, always worth it. It's always worth it. And it does get better. Mm -hmm. It really does get better. And I, and also, you know, it's, um, you know, joyfulness can sound uh, so... <laughs> Naive. Rebecca, yeah, like Rebecca Sunny Book Farm. Oh, we're chipped through the daisies. But uh, there's a reason it's all through the scripture. It's very powerful. It is. It, very powerful. It really is a very powerful thing. That whole positive, uh, it, it, and there's a difference. Of course, there's a difference between self denial mm -hmm. and pretending things aren't going on. Mm -hmm. Of course, mm -hmm. and what we're talking about, which is you know, be honest, call it what it is, and and then look to the the lessons, the strengths, the positive that 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 we can get out of it as we go through it. All of those things. Mm -hmm. So they, they do, they can and do go hand in hand if we choose to allow them to. Absolutely. To think Absolutely. of them as strengths. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I would agree with you, you know, oftentimes, you know, negative Nancy will pop up in my head and I'll go, wait, wait, wait. Mm -mm. That's yep. not true. And so then I have to turn on positive Patty. Yep. I said it. Positive I love Patty. it. Positive Patty, I say positive Patty now. You know, negative Nancy is bothering me. Come on now. I we'll, love it. Let, let, let's hear the truth. And positive That's Patty is like, you know, you're smart. You know, you're capable. You know, whatever That's it right. is that you're dealing with, you have to turn it on. And Absolutely. so I would always suggest to people is whatever, because a lot of times when you're negative, you feel it physically. Like your stomach will bother you. Your body will mm -hmm. ache. And when you're joyful, it's the exact opposite. So I'm like, do you want to be in pain or do you want to feel <laughs> joyful? Because I don't like having to walk around with a headache every time because something happens. I'm like, absolutely. To be okay. Absolutely. Turn on the positive patty. Let her be your inner dialogue to combat the lies that the enemy puts in your head. Because Absolutely. a lot of times it comes from a place of fear. And Absolutely. we want to live in a place of peace. And Absolutely. Peace, we have joy. Am yes. I, Dr. Angie. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So she has preached on today. <laughs> is what happened. Okay. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. You, you are so right. You're so right. Um, like you said, come from a place of I love it. Come from a place of joy. Um, uh, what did you just say when you were talking about the, the feeling it, um, just as you feel physical. it in the physical, mm -hmm. yes. And you're right. It's the exact opposite. I apologize. I'm turning the fan on and off because I was like, <laughs> uh, but yes, you're, you're absolutely right. It's, um, uh, something else that you said too, and that is something I was thinking about also in terms of today's conversation and joyfulness, you mm -hmm. know, coming out of COVID a little at a time and everything. And that is, I'm so glad that you talked about cho choice. Mm -hmm. You know, we choose to, uh, the positive Patty, talk, let, you know, positive Patty, Patty answer that. I love it. Um, it is a choice. And that's one of the, the, one of the, I think, most powerful lies of the enemy, one of the most powerful non-truths 
that go hand in hand with a habit of a negativity. You're so right about the fear. You know, there's that. That's a big part of it. And this lie that you don't have a choice. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that certainly, certainly psychologically speaking and physically speaking, yes, there are, there are, there are chemical things going on chemically in our bodies and our brains and all of that that can contribute to feelings of depression. To all, all true, all true. Um, but no matter uh, to what degree that, that is, and what I mean by that is in some situations, and there's, there's still kind of like some debate and discussion about this, and it's individual too. Um, if you have an ongoing habit of, you know, kind of a negative thinking and, and kind of all the physical reactions that go along with that, then your body does release chemicals. It does release, you know, hormonal changes, et cetera, in our bodies, men and women, that, you know, build, build on itself. Um, on, so it's, a, you know, it just kind of like goes hand in hand. On the flip side, if you have something physical that, that starts, you know, originates in, in your body in a physical manner, and as a result of something going on physically in your mind, in your, you know, in your brain and, and all of that, um, that can trigger chemical changes where the, the physical uh, problems manifest first and then the downness, mm-hmm. it com- uh, the negativity or the depression, anxiety is in response to that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, sometimes one comes before the other, but they both definitely can feed on, on each other. Mm-hmm. So in those situations, where you know uh, everyone who is dealing with depression doesn't necessarily, despite the commercials, doesn't necessarily need to take a pill. Yeah. But for those, a mm-hmm. first, uh, if if you are someone who who uh, benefits from the medication, that's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. However, even with even with taking medication, your body still has, and not your body so much, but your choices still remain. You still have work that you can do to. Uh, you know, build on a positive mindset, again, because it is healing, even if you're taking medication. And that's important to say, because um, I know as a psychologist, I hear so, so many times people, uh, even if they're fighting depression, you know, they really are fi- fighting depression and working on it. And it's really a challenge. They've got stuff going on um, physically and psychologically and, and in their lives. Mm-hmm. Um it can feel like, you know, it just feels like you're drowning so much in it. It feels like I don't have a choice about this, mm-hmm. but you, you absolutely can exercise choices and those choices may differ from person to person. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's why if you are taking medication for depression, anxiety, you know, any of those things, uh, that's why the, uh, many of us recommend the ideal situation is you still need, uh, or it is highly recommended that you have the counseling and the therapy that goes hand in hand with that because you still have learning to do. Mm-hmm. You still have, you know, steps to take to uh, really take a hold at as as much as you're able to of your own mental and physical health. So um, that that you know, it's important to say that. And like I said, I'm so glad you, that you talked about choice mm-hmm. because I think sometimes. Well, I know. Now I don't think I know that um, there there are some people who will feel re-victimized mm-hmm. if you tell them that they have a choice when they're feeling, uh, not you, but you know, any of us say that and they, they may feel that, well, you know, but this is something I've been suffering with so long and I've fought it and I've tried mm-hmm. um, having a uh, feeling that you need or maybe needing some additional help with that. Mm-hmm. It's again, that's that it's, it's not at all a bad thing, but they do go hand in hand. Mm-hmm. You know, you, we, we want to come at these concerns, you know, from multiple different, different ways be they medical as well as, you know, therapeutic or only therapeutic, all of that. So, uh, and that's also why, as you know, that um, if, if you're dealing with psychological uh, overwhelming stress or anxiety or any of that, that's, there's a reason why movement, so regular exercise is often part of the prescription, or at least it should be regular mm-hmm. exercise because physical movement, just like you were saying, your, if your body is affected, your mind is affected, your emotions are affected, your perspective, your psychological perspective, all, all of that, you could, because we're holistic beings. Mm-hmm. We're holistic beings. Um, that's why research is, again, the uh, psychological research has shown that um, people who have a regular spiritual practice, mm-hmm. who have regular, uh, who are, um, uh, have regular religious and spiritual practices as well, um, they're, they age 
better. <laughs> I mean, their quality of life is better. And that's even if they're facing some, you know, physical difficulties. Mm -hmm. So again, it's just all, um, there, there's no place where, it, I, I think I can comfortably say, there's no place in your life where a practice, a habit of uh, positivity and joyfulness doesn't have its place. You know, and, and that is even in the worst of, as, as we've talked about this past year, even though in the worst of painful tragedies, you want to certainly acknowledge all of that, all of, acknowledge the reality of all of that. But like we were talking about, okay, oh, as I was saying, um, with uh, this past year, as you've spoken of many times with the pandemic, and then, um, but also I was particularly thinking about George Floyd as an example, um, uh, you know, Obviously and clearly tragic, painful, you know, all of those things that, that you have, as you have said, mm -hmm. um, you know, consistently. Um, even in that, we did talk about, uh, like my mom said, you know, while wow, God has really used George Floyd, yes. uh, at, you know, to show the world, to help the world see some things, mm -hmm. to open the eyes of people who maybe didn't believe that mm -hmm. these things actually go on, no mm -hmm. matter how much black folks may have been telling, you know, saying it. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, some of our white brothers and sisters may have thought, oh, you know, but that's, that doesn't really go on, you know, um, uh, you know, and, and other things too, uh, it's brought more people into the, the fight for uh, justice. It's woken more people up. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, like we were saying in the last a couple of shows, um, some folks who were not a part of, or are not a part of what we consider the black community um, are stepping up and saying, you know what, I, I, I take this personally, what can I do to be a part? So mm -hmm. that's, a, I think, a perfect example of, of a very painful, very tragic, um, you know, just an awful, awful situation uh, that while we may not find joy in it, the habit of positivity, um, has us looking to looking forward, being thankful for uh, George Floyd's life, mm -hmm. and also how, what that has done to help make changes that we've needed to make and have been fighting to make for so long. So, mm -hmm. you know, again, that idea of balance, right? right you know, that idea of balance is so important. So we have talked about the power of prayer. We have talked about the importance of a spiritual practice in your life. We've also mm -hmm. talked about the power of community, how when we give to other people and surround ourselves with people who love us, it helps us. Yes. I want to talk really quickly because our time is, is moving fast <laughs> about positive affirmations. So, you know, there are lots of people who have these positive affirmations that they say, and there are a lot of people, I've been reading articles about the importance and the power in words. Mm -hmm. And I think when you talk about having a choice, between how you talk to yourself, how you talk to others matters so much. Can you just talk a little bit about the importance of positive affirmations? Because we want to end this on a positive note. Yes, so absolutely. Abundant joy in living. Yes, yes. Um, well, uh, I would say that, you know, well, what I was going to say is I, I always am so thankful for um, your show. And it's such a privilege that you to have me on. I'm so uh, uh, I just really enjoy sitting with you. Um, and and today, you know, as always, and today with your focus on joyfulness, um, uh, it, you know, it's just it's just so it's so important. But <laughs> uh, what I would say is I would end with this. Um, I um, um, you know as, as I've alluded to at times, you know, I've, I, my dad was like a champion athlete and all <laughs> swimmer, gymnast, whatever. So all three of his kids, you know, he passed that uh, that along, um, and he always encouraged us, you know, everyone, you know, you know, find the things that you enjoy to do. Everyone's different, you know. Mm -hmm. What do you? So for me, like I, I've said, I love lifting weights. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been doing this as a teenager. I enjoy. I love walking. And I do a little yoga and change it up, etc. So doing that. Uh, uh, the habit of, of exercising. And, and frankly, you know, I have to say this too, frankly, being a, um, the things that we expose our kids to, uh, you know, fitness and sports, um, dance lessons, music lessons, really all of those, um, in, anything in the arts, definitely. They teach our kids, um, I was just having this conversation with someone recently, they, they teach our kids discipline, 
yeah. and not just yeah. the discipline of the the art, the work of it, but mental discipline. Mm -hmm. um, there's a certain, you know, when you sit at the piano, there is a list of things that you go through, you know, feet on the floor, posture, you know, mm -hmm. this way, you know, all of that. Um, no matter what instrument you're approaching, you should always be connecting your breath to it. You know, mm -hmm. as a vocalist, same thing, you know, soft knees, don't lock out your knees, all, all of that. Um, and, and with dance, for all that. So I was thinking, you know, circling back around to working out, um, all of those things are parts of my life. And if you are an, uh, an artist or creative person and you know the you know, taking time to practice something, practice painting, practice whatever. You know, there's always those those times where it's like, oh, I want to throw it across the room. <laughs> um, but that going back and picking the instrument up again, mm -hmm. or going back and trying that dance step one more time, mm -hmm. that takes, uh, even if we're not aware of it, and a, a good instructor will help us become aware of it to be conscious of that, that takes a, a, a habit as you're developing a life habit of, uh, okay, try it again. Mm -hmm. I can, and in, in conjunction with that, why would you try it again if you can't do it? Oh, I can't do this. And you come back, okay, I'm trying it again. Because what you're saying is I can do this. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I do, uh, to, so just to end with the, the workout, the, for me, the, I, I love to do is because I, I do it in all our aspects of my life. Cause I'm a sunny person. Like I said, yellow is my favorite color. Like the sun, it always has been it's bright and warm. Um, so when I'm working out, you know, and you know, I'm trying to get that last rep in or that last, you know, whatever, and I, I never in life, I, I never call myself stupid. I re well, not never, very rarely. And, and check this out. If the, when I, whenever I do, which is very rare, I apologize to myself. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to treat myself with as much respect as I would anyone else. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that about myself. That's right. You know, I, so I've, I, and I rarely say, and now I will say, oh man, that was so stupid. But I do not call myself stupid. I don't put myself down. So I, I encourage people to be their own best coach. Mm -hmm. So positive affirmations, because you know, I just don't ever give a short answer. <laughs> <laughs> But I can do it. Okay, so here's <laughs> uh, things that I say when I work out, I would say that everyone should say to themselves. You can do it. Mm -hmm. Just breathe. You've done it before. You've got this. Take your time. Don't rush. You'll get it next time. Mm -hmm. Just like you would anyone else, just support, mm -hmm. lift up, encourage, be gentle with yourself. The, the, the actual affirmations are wonderful. Mm -hmm. The thinking behind it, I think is even more powerful. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you are your own best, become your own best coach. Be kind and as, as kind and as gentle with yourself as you would anyone else. Because we assume you love yourself, right? Right. Anyone else, right? Exactly. I know you do, of course, but as, we <laughs> talk, uh, as you would anyone else, never call you and, and whatever that means to you. Mm -hmm. Well, would you call so and so? And no, don't do that. Don't call yourself names. I'll I'll get it next time. Um, you know, uh, you know, I can do it. Mm -hmm. One more, you can do it. Mm -hmm. And if you can't do it, it's okay. You'll get it next time. Mm -hmm. You have to grow into it. Be patient. Mm -hmm. All of those things. All those things. Um, they cooked me. All those things are great. Do all those things, and then also again let it come from a place of support and love yourself, you know, give yourself a hug, a mental hug, physical hug, and uh, give yourself room, you know, give yourself room, so, and, and support. I love it. That was a perfect way to end our session today, Dr. Angie. Thank you so much. <laughs> For coming on the Kim B. Davis Show, you always bring us so much information and so much to think about. Thank so you. before we go, you have to tell us how we can find you on social media, how to reach you, tell us about your books and your music. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Thank you. you. Uh, well, um, I'll start with the book. I will start with the book. This is the my book. It's called Freedom. And the, the, the small words are, what is the experience of living without negative self-imposed limitations? Sorry, it's Blair. And 
uh, this has everything to do with what we've been talking about. And um, it's really applicable to just like, you know, so many things in life. But the book is called Freedom. I called it Freedom because it's um, it's really research that I did uh, with people from different walks of life. And it deals with how uh, to work through some, some key themes to help you work through places in your life in which you might feel stuck or that you don't have the freedom to be fully be yourself, how you can work through that to a point of feeling that you're not living under negative self-imposed limitations. And so much of that deals with what we were just talking about, mm -hmm. which is the, you know, the mental journey, what we tell ourselves and, and, and all of that and supporting ourselves, um, as well as looking at um, where some of that, some of that negative uh, mentality comes from and how to help kind of undo that, to recognize that. So this is my book. It is currently available at Ex Libris. Um, that is the, the publisher's name. Um, it will be available on Amazon again. I have to replenish their stock. It was at Amazon. But um, Ex Libris, I have to literally write it out because I need to make sure I spell it right. It's X L I B R I S. X L I B R I S. So exlibris.com. You can go there and get the book by Dr. Angela Celeste May. That's my book. Um, I am president of two companies. I'm president of A.M. May and Associates Incorporated. So that's A.M. May and Associates Incorporated. You can um, go to our website, ammayassociates.com. And um, in our company, it's uh, my sister and myself. We do um, professional and personal coaching. Um, we have uh, classes that we put on virtually as well, and um, uh, counseling is offered or will be offered actually uh, starting this summer also. Um, and I do consulting through the company for individuals as well as for uh, companies and corporations. So the newest thing uh, coming up is, uh, well, I've, I've been doing some coaching, but I do personal and professional coaching as well as doctoral dissertation coaching. So if you are a doctorate student, you want some coaching help with your research question or any of that stuff, I, I do all of that. So go to the website for that. Um, my other company is my production company. I'm a professional vocalist and musician and play several instruments. I um, My company is called Celeste Productions and I'm a recording artist and writer. Um, you can go to uh, reverbnation.com and look under Angela Celeste May for my two albums. Um, and... Uh, and I also teach. I teach music as well uh, here in Detroit at Mary Grove College. It's not a college anymore. Mary Grove Conservancy under my company. And I also do some virtual lessons as well in terms of piano. So uh, that's that's another another thing. Um, what else? We got so much stuff going on. What else? <laughs> what else? There's so much you stuff going on. You're in a movie. You're, you're... Oh, gosh, yes, that's true. <laughs> That's true. Well, I, you know, in the last year or so, last couple of years, I've been in three movies, actually, uh, mm -hmm. all as myself. So um, uh, I was in a movie produced by Detroit. There's a, a, a group of young Detroiters mm -hmm. who uh, are involved in filming and they create a magazine and all that. It's called Youth in the D for Detroit. Um, and uh, they did a, a film a couple of years ago dealing with um, youth and violence and the impact on it. So I was in that film. Um, speaking as myself, Dr. Angela Celeste and answering their interview questions on camera about how uh, violence affects youth. I also was a participant and a script advisor for the movie called Trista. It's an independent film. You can look it up on online by a Detroit filmmaker. And uh, that one is actually, it's a very unique film the way he did it, but it's about uh, a young lady and her journey dealing with depression mm -hmm. and how she comes out of it, you know, and how she works, works through that. Um, so I was a script advisor on that and he did a separate film, a separate film short with okay. myself and three other psychologists, again, answering questions about depression. Mm -hmm. And then finally, the film Solomon, um, the film Solomon, I was in as a musician. So uh, myself and my band, the No Limits Band, we are in that movie um, if you hear uh, singing in it, in, in the big gala scene, that is my voice. I'm in the background. I'm on the, on the <laughs> stage with my band, which includes my brother. Um, but uh, that one, it's called Solomon, and it is now, uh, it's now in wide release. So um, we had a big screen premiere uh, a little while ago, and then it went through the circuit, you know, for um, film festivals. It's multiple. It's won multiple awards. 
mm-hmm. for filming. And um, so, yeah, it's in wide release. So that means go to Amazon Prime. It's on, you know, everywhere. Everywhere you can think of that you get your movies, um, you can find it. So it's called Solomon. Excellent, excellent movie. Thank you for asking about that. Um, I just reached 1,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. So yeah, I'm excited about that. So go to my YouTube channel. Uh, again, it's Angela Celeste May, my name, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, so in, in terms of social media, Facebook, mm-hmm. Angela Celeste May. YouTube, Angela Celeste May. Instagram, Angela Celeste May. And um, uh, AM Main Associates has, we're on social media also. And finally, Twitter. Celeste MUS and the number one. MUS is for music, MUS. So Celeste MUS one on Twitter. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much. You're welcome. That you know you have so much going on. Thank you so I do. Much. I do. I'm blessed. I'm thankful. You are. You are. And we're joyful and we're optimistic because things are going well. And we're just so happy that you are part of the Kimby Davis Show family. Thank we look you. To next month with another fascinating topic. So thank you again for joining us. Thank you guys for tuning in to the Kim B. Davis show. I hope that you'll tune in for our next show. And remember, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat, and TikTok under Kimberly Bachelor Davis. Bachelor is spelled B-A-T-C-H-E-L-O-R. You can find out more about me at my website at KimBDavis.com as an author. You can see this show on YouTube.com forward slash Kimberly Bachelor Davis. You can also listen to this show on Apple, Spotify, Google, and Stitcher. Thank you again for tuning in. And as always, remember, be magnificent.